Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Thursday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Almost forgot what day of the week it was right then. Uh, but I hope you guys are doing well out there, having yourselves a great ending to your day, a great work week out there so far as we get a little bit closer to the weekend that we all love and enjoy. Uh, got you an update on quite a few things uh, this evening, but none of these things are going to take up a lot of time, so it's not going to be a, a super long video. going to give you some really cut and dry, but really good information in this video as uh, you know I am expecting severe weather over the next 48 hours across many portions of the country we've had some crazy weather today well really last night with the catastrophic flooding in the Fort Lauderdale Florida area that picked up some areas on picked up nearly two feet of rain 24 inches of rain and last time I checked about an hour hour and a half ago there was another storm this afternoon moving into the area hope you guys are being are staying safe out there was a lot of um, cars people trapped on the, some of the roadways in the area so hope you guys are, are faring well down there on the eastern and southeastern coastline of Florida but um, you know, we have this crazy technical non-tropical low over the deep south right now that moved inland this morning and is beginning to pick up a lot more forward speed and will weaken. But uh, what I'm about to show you here is a non-tropical low, and I'll, I'll show it to you here in a second. It look, literally looks like there's a hurricane over the state of Mississippi this evening. But um, we're going to talk about a few things, a severe weather threat tomorrow and then a severe weather threat for Saturday. So if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. It goes a long way. And I uh, really appreciate people who can continue to tune in, even in these slower times. Um, it really means the world. It really kind of continues to uh, kind of light, light a fire into me to continue to pump out the content, regardless of seeing the views drop, which is totally expected in the spring and as we get into summer. So thank you all for people who continue to view. If you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always, please put those in the comments below so I can do that. I can pray over them. And more importantly, a whole lot of other people can pray over it also. So let's get rolling. Check it out. Check out this satellite view. Look at this spin. If you showed me this and didn't tell me what month of the year it was didn't really provide any details you just showed me this i would say that this would be that this is the leftovers of a landfall and tropical storm or hurricane that just made landfall in the gulf of mexico on the gulf coastline is moving north but it's technically a non-tropical low this thing literally looks like a cat one cat two hurricane over mississippi right now pretty wild and of course the outer bands have spawn tornado warnings in georgia this afternoon we might have had a confirmed tornado right in the middle of central uh georgia but you know we're getting some showers here in my neck of the woods right when i pulled up into my driveway around 5 30 it started raining uh so you know some of this weather is going to make it all the way into the carolinas might be a nice looking sunrise with these high clouds with this cloud deck moving all the way into kentucky and southwest virginia uh, but this is a pretty impressive look on a satellite Beautiful looking swirl and really not a dangerous swirl at all. Um, and in fact, you actually look at the radar, what this looks like. Here it is. I mean, it's actually reflecting that way at the surface, too. There's actually something under the hood, under the clouds. This is the radar out of Jackson, Mississippi. There's a legit swirl north of Jackson, Mississippi, uh, just uh, south or southeast of Greenwood, Mississippi. Uh, so if you're experiencing gusty winds in Mississippi and just moderate rain, uh, this is literally a low pressure right overhead. A pretty impressive look. I mean, if you showed me this, I would not think it would be April the 13th, but here we are. Uh, but talking about the severe weather risk, it did it did upgrade to an enhanced risk a little bit uh, later earlier this morning, but a little bit early, later this afternoon, it downgraded back to a slight risk. There is a chance, you know, you still got the 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles of any given point between now and tomorrow morning in this area. Um, and then a damaging wind threat, 15% risk of winds pushing about 55 to 60 mile per hour, miles per hour. But, um, you know, this will eventually move into the Carolinas and we'll actually show that now there's a marginal risk for severe weather in the Carolinas starting tomorrow morning throughout the day tomorrow. We'll see if this gets upgraded to an enhanced, but right now there is a less than 2% chance of a tornado with both threats. And we'll talk about this threat here in a second. Well, let's go on and look at the radar. Um, out of let's say uh macon no you can't let's see georgia um the robin's radar see what it's doing right now we still got some stronger showers and storms out here nothing's really severe warmed or warmed or tornado warned out here but 
These showers, sorry for zooming in and out, these showers and storms will continue to try to work their way into South Carolina. Uh, the, the forward motion of it might change um, throughout the uh, nighttime hours, might move in more so from this way. But in general, expect an on and off shower kind of night, stormy night for areas of central Georgia and then eventually getting into South Carolina a little bit later tonight. And we'll look at the HRRR model. We'll start it off around 10 p.m. tonight. Just uh, showers and storms making their way through. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to sleep worried by any means. No, but uh, you know, you're, you know, this is for, for example, this is around 3 a.m. You got some heavier downpours, maybe some flashes of lightning. You might get woken up by a storm some, sometime tonight in northeast Georgia, South Carolina, maybe the Piedmont or foothills, or even the mountainous regions of North Carolina. You might get woken up by a low rumble of thunder, and then we're waking up tomorrow morning around this is around 7 a.m. Uh, these showers, heavier downpours are working their way into the triad, throughout the triad of North Carolina, PD of South Carolina getting some shower storm activity. And then we'll watch a little bit later, um, you know, as we get late into the late morning hours, these could intensify and around the Wilmington area points north of the coastline to the southern sections of the Outer Banks, uh, Raleigh, um, you know, I wouldn't rule out uh, some gusty winds, maybe a damaging wind. Uh, a storm that could produce some damaging winds, but watch as we get a little bit later, uh, just around lunchtime. You got to watch this storm in and around the Greenwood, South Carolina area. I'm not saying that's exactly where a storm's going to be, but as the atmosphere tries to uh, reestablish itself, if you will, after this morning convection right here, we're going to have a lot of scattered convection storms, downpours, and storms, basically from. You know, uh, the Cumberland Plateau of Tennessee, North Georgia, upstate, central South Carolina, North Carolina, the mountains of North Carolina, Virginia and Tennessee, eastern, uh, you know, eastern Kentucky. It's going to be kind of a spring type of day with some spring storms, early summer day with some storms just wrapping their way through. And this is still the energy from that non-tropical low pressure spinning over Mississippi right now. So some of these could produce some gusty winds, can come up on you pretty quick. They'll probably be moving very fast. Uh, and I would not rule out a quick spin up with these. And we're getting into this evening. Bring your raincoat in the Carolinas tomorrow. And these will try to make their way into Virginia as we work our way into tomorrow night. And we'll continue to lose some steam. Not much of a tornado threat with this just because you have, you don't have a lot of shear with this. A lot of, um, uh, you know, you know, favorable winds aloft to really put a spin in the atmosphere. Uh, but this is updraft felicity swaths or tracks tries to show us where there could be a spinning updraft. And, you know, there's a couple areas. One is that first storm I mentioned sometime around noon up here, uh, north of uh, Newberry around Greenwood. But, you know, I, I'm not expecting, I would say today's storm tornado threat. It would be, was, was ended up being, well, is was higher than what will be for tomorrow, if that makes any sense, twisting my words up. So uh, just be aware of this. We'll see if this gets upgraded to a slight risk in tomorrow morning's update. There is a slight risk for tomorrow for severe storms. Luckily, this did not uptrend into the hours leading up to this, and I really don't think it is, but Kansas City right in here, uh, kind of uh, east central Kansas and central Kansas right in here, southeast Nebraska and far northern Oklahoma. This is kind of tweaked back and forth. You know, north Texas, you're no longer... I'm in a slight risk, but you know, you look at the tornado threat with this, it's it's less than 2%. They've dropped the tornado threat with this, but the hell threat, there's a 15% risk in this yellow area. And we'll look at the graphic down here. You see the 15% risk, 15% risk of hell pushing one inch of diameter or larger in this yellow area within 25 miles in any given point. And there's also, you see the black outlined area. And if you're living in this region, there's a 10% risk to see Larger hail, pushing two inch diameter or larger in this region, significant hail. So um, I, I do think we could, we could add the possibility for some uh, hail storms tomorrow in this region, but I'm not expecting widespread storms. In fact, you know, we're getting into about midday tomorrow. I know this is a really broad look. By the way, you could have some snow flying around along the foothills and the mountains of Colorado, which is not super rare at all to see snow in April in Colorado whatsoever. Um, April, um, Denver, Colorado has had many April snowfalls um, and snowstorms. But uh, here you go, bang, some storm development right into here, you know, probably the late afternoon, evening time. And, you know, we'll go down and look at uh, Kansas. And, you know, it, it's not a big look, you know, it's around 7 p.m. Central Time. 
Um, really, I would say the storms might fire up around 5 to 6 p.m., but you could potentially get a pretty photo. If you're a storm chaser out here, you know, it's not a highly populated area, but you could potentially see definitely a, you know, a, a photogenic supercell out here, but, you know, not a lot of favorable uh, wind profiles aloft to really produce anything that's going to rotate, very conditional threats. But these storms could produce some large hail. We're getting a 10, 11 p.m. Watch out southeast Nebraska. Really has a big time sell right there. Uh, but, you know, just just not a big threat tomorrow. I don't think we have really anything to worry about. I would say, uh, you know, if you're in Can if you're in, in this area of Kansas into this area of Nebraska, uh, definitely maybe have a way to protect your, your cars if possible. And uh, you guys know all about those huge supercells out there, you know, storm producing baseball size hell. You guys know all about that out there. So I know you know what to do, but still, you know, be prepared for that. Saturday, there is a slight risk, pretty large, from northern Louisiana, even a small section of eastern Texas, all the way to southwest Illinois. This hasn't changed much from this morning. But there's also, you know, a 10% risk of severe weather. I'm sorry, a 15% risk of severe weather and a slight risk. There's also a 10% chance of significant severe weather. That can be all hazards. But I'm going, going to go on and tell you this is probably going to be for hail, and that potentially it could be for winds also. That's the only reason I could say that this upgrades to an enhanced risk is because you could have a hatched significant hail threat and a hatched damaging wind threat. Would not be surprised one bit, and I'll talk, talk to you about why here. Um, but for now, that's what this looks like. We'll see what this looks like in the morning. We're only in range of the NAM with this system. So we'll start off Saturday morning here in Arkansas. And this includes southern Missouri and all these states that you see, you know, southwest and southern Illinois, western Kentucky and Tennessee and places like that. We'll start off around you know, 7, 8, 7 a.m. Uh, Central Time. You know, we get all the way to about noon at this point. Nothing going on for Saturday. Then bang, some big storms develop. This is around 5, 6 p.m. Nasty storms begin to develop right on Springfield, um, Missouri. Um, they begin to work their way through the mountainous regions of uh, western Arkansas and northern Arkansas. And then we'll see if this really comes together and develops into a nasty line of storms. There could be wind-driven hail in this. Uh, tornado threat, I'm just not seeing much of it. But uh, this is going to be more so just maybe a nasty squall line with embedded large hail. So it could be wind-driven hail, like hail blowing sideways. So please be careful out here. You guys have seen some crazy weather in the state of Arkansas and surrounding regions, but you know this is for about 8 p.m. The sun's beginning to set fully, and you know, you're going to see these storms coming. Could be just one big consolidated line of storms from central Missouri all the way down through Arkansas, all the way down into northern Louisiana. And I mean, this is, you know, holding tight, you know, you know, you're getting into about 10 p.m., begins to lose its punch, which I think will happen by the time it makes it into Memphis, Tennessee, um, uh, western, um, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, and then southwest um, areas of Illinois. It could potentially be losing some steam, but could still be producing some damaging wind gusts. So, um, that's about it. That's all I got tonight. We'll continue to keep you guys updated, but you know, none of these severe weather events I'm expecting to be some kind of significant outbreak by any means, but stay tuned. I'll keep you updated. God bless all y'all. Have a great night.